Jamie. It's over. Seriously. So rude. If this is your first time to my channel, my name is Karen Campbell and I'm a mixed media artist. I love to teach on YouTube all about mixed media art and drawing. So when you're sitting down at your art journals, you can just get to work on your feelings, express yourself, and not have to worry about all the technical stuff because you're just having a really good time at your easel. So today I am in the middle of a very jam packed with information series. And it's all about, oh, Jamie, <laughs> thought he was falling. It's all about making a successfully layered mixed media hamburger. And this is video number five of the series. This is a doozy. If you haven't started at the beginning, you might wanna go back and rewatch at least the very first one. I'll put an I in the, in the corner of the screen. You can just click on that and that will bring up the whole playlist for this series after you're watching this video and you can go back and start at the beginning if you need to have a refresher on that. I have so much information to go over today. We are gonna talk about, number one, we're gonna pick up where we left off on the ugly stage and talk about how to keep that from getting the best of you. But mostly what I wanna talk to you about today and to demo is learning and educating yourself about the materials that you are working with. It's so much more important to understand and what you're working with, what the ingredients are, how long they're gonna last, and how they behave on your paper. Not only dry, but also wet, because in mixed media, it's gloopy, it's gloppy, we're using a lot of different materials. And this video specifically is about layer number three, and you need my hamburger cheat sheet if you don't have it already. Um, and in layer three, this is the layer that's going on top of our layer of acrylics. Again, you need to go rewatch the first video to understand what I'm talking about. Basically, you have your substrate or your surface or your canvas or your art journal, and then you have your collage layer, and then you have your acrylics layer. This is layer number three, which goes on top of your gesso and your acrylics, okay? You don't have a whole craft store's worth of supplies that will work on top of acrylics, but there are very specific products that will do awesome on acrylics, and that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. I got super carried away, and I made you not one cheat sheet, but I made an entire nine-page booklet <laughs> For you that talks all about mixed media supplies, how they behave, my recommendations, I talk about artist grade paints versus craft grade paints and supplies, not just paints. And you really need this download. <laughs> because um, it has just a ton of information. It answers all of your questions on why not oils, why not alcohol-based markers, why not watercolors, um, and what the difference is between artist grade and craft grade, and it gives you specific examples on which brands to look for and your product um, ingredients to look for. It is like ridiculous. I went down like a two-day wormhole. So if you want to um, grab that booklet, please leave a comment below and just say, I'd like the booklet, please. I also have to say really quickly that the lists, because I can't possibly list every art supply in the world. If you have anything you want to add on to my list, I would love to get these lists filled in longer. So in the comment section too, if you, after you download your PDF, if you notice like there's a glaringly obvious omission and then you wanna put in your two cents, I would love to fill this list out even more. Just drop it in the comment section and let me know where it goes. And when you see the handout, you will know what I am looking for. So we have so much to go over today. We have got to dive in and get started. I'm going to shut up. This is four minute intro, that is not okay. We will get it started right now. Now before we dive into the actual demo and continuing on our paintings from where we left off from last week, I wanna show you what's in this packet. We're gonna go through the important things step by step. The first of all, this goes with video number five in the series, just so you know where we're picking up and there's some links there. Okay, this is the PDF that everyone should have gotten so far. So if you haven't gotten this one, you can grab it with the whole packet that I have. Again, please, in the comment section below, just say you can ask for just this PDF, the hamburger PDF, or the booklet. <laughs> and this will be included in the booklet. We are on layer three, like I was just discussing, okay? We have our collage layer. 
The layer number two is the acrylic paint and gesso, and we are here. This is a big deal, guys. There's stuff that will not work here, and there's a lot of stuff that will. And so that is what exactly where we are talking today. And we're actually gonna work right up until, we are actually gonna put the Mod Podge on today too. So I guess this is also layer four. Okay, so everything that we put on today, we have to understand how it's gonna work with the Mod Podge. That is a liquid. So we have to know exactly what we want to have happen in layer three because we're slapping a big old li liquid on top, okay? You do not have to use Mod Podge if you don't want to. There's a lot of people that are super crazy against Mod Podge. I do not understand why. If you're one of those people, don't use it. That's fine, but that's what I'm using today. I've never had a problem with it. I've been using it for over a decade. Okay, the very first question, and I spelled it out right here. Do I care about quality? Do you care about quality? Are you selling or gifting your original work to anyone? Okay, if the answer to that question is yes, you owe it to your buyer or the, the recipient of your gift to use artist grade options. This is actually super duper important and I want to talk about this for two seconds because this is how important this is. Okay, I went through a very long period of stage in my life where I was doing arts and craft shows and fairs, okay? That is how I made my money. I, at this one particular one, made this whole series of these girls in cocktail illustrations. I should bring, I love my cocktail ones. Um, okay, and I made them on boards just like this and they all had cute sayings and whatnot. Okay, this is what this looked like. This is a, this is a couple years afterwards. <clears throat> However, knowing that I've sold, I almost sold out and all of these beautiful girls went to various homes across the land. I even sold some to artists in other countries. Okay, this is like a big deal. This was the paint that I was using that I didn't understand. Uh, I didn't understand, I didn't research, and I didn't quite frankly care about things like light fast and dye based products. Okay. This, and actually this is a really old bottle, so I'm not even sure this is even going to be a good example. This is the paint that I was painting with. Okay. This color right here. Had I known. There's a, actually a sailor on top of this. And this, by the way, has a UV sailor on top. Can you see the difference between that and that? Okay, that is the consequence of using, using supplies that are not artist grade. You guys, this is really important to understand what your materials are made of, okay? Probably the very mass majority of the art supplies that you buy at Michael's and Hobby Lobby and AC Moore and Hobbycraft are craft grade materials, okay? Is there anything wrong with that if you're working in your art journal and you're, you know, just creating to your, to your heart's content? You're not selling your work. You're not gonna gift it away. Does it matter? No, I don't think it does matter. I think you can go in and buy whatever you want. However, look at the, look at what happened. Look at the difference between this and right and this. That was all pink. Her pigtails were totally pink. But guys, that is not okay. And that is what happens when you buy products that are not light fast, okay? It's, it's, <laughs> bad things happen and this happened only over the course of a year now what happened is it like deteriorated and then it stopped it kind of leveled off and it hasn't really gotten worse but look at the difference between that and that I mean that's just horrible it's really really bad and again that's with a sealer and that's another thing I've had people say well yeah, there's there's products you can buy they have UV sprays to protect it it doesn't matter I Spray that with a UV protection. And not only that, but this has been in my dark closet the whole time. It's not even been exposed to artificial light or sunlight. And that is how bad those products has, have faded. That is really bad. So I have to draw your attention to that. This isn't just like, oh, it's, it'll be fine. It's not fine. Especially like, even if that was in my closed art journal, it would still fade. When you open that art journal, even if you're crafting for yourself, that's like the saddest thing ever. And that's also really not okay if you're selling your work 
or you're gifting that to somebody, you know it's just gonna look terrible a year later, that's really bad. So I have to draw your attention to that. So luckily in this packet, I have everything you need to if you still want to buy those products, that is fine. I'm not going to judge you. I will never know. I have an entire studio filled with those products, with those products as well. But I have to say, I'm not reaching for my Delusions products anymore. I just can't even do it with like a clear conscience. Okay. So that's the first thing we need to ask ourselves. Is that a priority for you? Second question, when you're adding the foreground, right? of your painting, whatever that is, so they say this was like my squirrel, that's my background, this is my squirrel. The question is, do I want my materials to smudge and smear like crazy, okay? Do we want it? And by the way, this is on top of the acrylic layer we already put down. So this is what I'm talking about. This we did last week, so we have our background is just the busy collage and then our first layer is the acrylics so i'm talking about things we're putting on top of the acrylics to be clear you need to ask yourself do you want your material whatever you put on here do you want it to smudge okay if the answer is yes <laughs> you're going to choose from one of these categories if you only want a little blending Okay, you're gonna choose from the blender, see my little blender category. And if you don't want anything to move, like you wanna draw or paint something and you want it to stay just where it is, because remember, we're adding a whole gloppy, sloppy layer of Mod Podge or liquid or whatever it is you wanna put on there, we're adding it on top. So you need to know what materials you got going on because there's going to be consequences okay so if you can choose beforehand you will have no surprises do you see where i'm going with this so if you want no movement you choose from this category okay i tried to make this as clear as possible <laughs> because I've had emails that said, I followed your process, Karen, and I did the, mod, the Stabilo just like you talked about. And when I added my layer of Mod Podge on layer four, it ruined everything. And, and I'm thinking, well, yeah, because like there's consequences. So I love that this does things. If you are not that person, that's fine, you, you have options. You don't ever have to use the Stabilo ever in your life. You can just move down to here and choose things from that category. And then guess what guys? Everybody wins. Okay, so this is what I have done. I have chosen acrylic grade products and we have created a little chart on how they react. I put water because I ran out of space for liquid, but really it's how they react to water and any liquid. I'm gonna be using Mod Podge. You can use whatever you like. So there is this category. Of this is these are products that are like super water reactive. So my Stabilo is my favorite example because it's crazy. So when you add water, it goes nuts. Okay, and then there's a, there's just a couple of more products that you that fall under this category. If this is like a, this is like a normal water soluble like pencil ink tense product um, watercolor pencils again you have a nice long list of there then you have like this lovely blend these are products that are listed as water soluble on their labels but they don't go crazy like there's a little bit of movement and then frozen ones are ones that are permanent so when you put them down these are like pit pens and your um, like paint markers india ink products acrylic paints and inks um just regular color pencil will go in this i will note that graphite pencils tend to be somewhere in here graphite pencils are not really frozen they do have a little bit of movement which we saw last week when I when this was a pencil and the acrylic paint, which is wet, again, it's liquid, okay, it will react. So there's always consequences, but if you can make your mind up before what you wanna have happen, you can choose products that will behave just like you want them to, and then there's no surprises. You're, you're so good to go. Okay, and if you are not clear, if whatever, whatever ingredient you're using, whatever art supply you grab isn't on the list, you should test it first, okay? And put it on, add it to my categories, all right? So I'm gonna do a little test. This is gonna be the Stabilo All. 
I'm pretty sure that this pencil, this is just a regular watercolor pencil by Karen Dash. This is the lovely blend category. Okay, and this is frozen, not going anywhere. And these are all products that are listed on this chart, okay? We're going in order. And hopefully, if I've been right, these will act exactly accordingly. So I'm gonna add, just to show you, corroborate my, my guesses here. You guys do the same thing at home, okay? So the first one should be Extreme Activation Stabilo. Holy mazzoli, see what I'm talking about? That is 100% extreme activation that's my favorite stabilo all that means when i add my mod podge layer because that's coming next that's what's gonna happen if you know that ahead of time you either will run like the hills and never use it or you will embrace it for what it does all right Ooh, that's pretty see normally see how that is um see how you can see the pencil that's why it's not on the extreme activation and that's under moderate melt. I don't know if that's exactly the right word. It's pretty melty, right? But we're talking this category and that is, and I put watercolor pencil. So that's pretty much every watercolor pencil and you see how it leaves a little bit behind. That's why it stays in that category. Stabilo, no, it's that is 100% water soluble. Watercolor pencils, I would put them at like 80 to 90%. All right, this is, and a lot of people asked me in the very first video that I did with the hamburger series, I am using, this is what I was using. I didn't spell it out very well. This is an art crayon by Marabou. Now, this is interesting. So I've been using gelatos for years and years and distress crayons. Distress crayons are a craft product and they are not light fast and I am discontinuing using them for the exact you know, uh, example I was showing you earlier. Gelatos are much better. These, they actually sell it at Jerry's Artorama. You can't find these at craft stores because these are a much finer grade art supply. They're made by Marabou. You can find some of them on Amazon. Jerry's Artorama sells them. I actually, that's where I buy them, but I buy them at the store in person. I do not buy these online. These are a fantastic product. They are worked exactly the same as gelatos. They're really, really creamy. The company sent them to me and I actually gave them all away in my last YouTube giveaway and I rebought all of them myself with my own money because she, even though she offered to buy them just to send me some more, I just want you to know that because I want to use products that I'm not being sponsored for, I genuinely love and use these products and those are the ones I'm recommending to you. All right, this one, you see when you, water, when you add water, it leaves behind even more. So it's slightly less um, it's slightly less activating than this category. Do you understand like the differences, like how much they're activating? Now remember, I just took my little brush and I'm scrubbing this out, right? Like heart. When I when we apply the next layer, the Mod Podge, we're just sweeping it with a foam brush, so it doesn't get this this action very much. But I wanted to do the demo based on just these different categories, so you can do these tests again by yourself. Or if you want to be really accurate, you can just test it with a Mod Podge with the foam brush and understand exactly how it's going to move. And then of course this, I think I still have this product on here, um, is permanent and it doesn't move. And that is my Posca paint pen. Okay? I hope that clarifies all of the categories. And again, I put my personal favorite brands in here. Um, I didn't put in anything I haven't used myself. On the next page of the packet, we have um, just a list of, again, my favorite products. You'll see these products. Here's some of those art crayons by Marabou I was just using. These are the products I'm using for layers, this layer, and then also um, after the Mod Podge layer. That will be in next week's video. I'm just not gonna demo that layer today. It'll be next Friday. So I'm just going step by step through the hamburger. But I want you to have these um, just with you because these again these are all these are products I own pay for and use myself and have used to make like hundreds of successful mixed media products here here is another <laughs> sheet I told her I went crazy um, here's another page of recommendations of things um, that I've messed around with but I have not I just listed them here because they're they're reputable and they work um, 
they're not on my high priority page, they're kind of on my second page. And then obviously I just put a little caveat that says, obviously I can't always, I'm not gonna be able to list off everything. Trust me, I tried. I went through like a three day wormhole with this rabbit hole. But I put down a list of the rep, most reputable kind of like manufacturers of art products and these are, the, pro the properties that you're looking for, okay? They should be light, fast, archival, pigment-based, wax-based, artist-grade, acid-free. These are the words that you should be looking for. Read your labels and educate yourself. If you're not sure, guys, you can Google it. You can Google something and just say, you know, are gelatos light, fast? That's all you need to do and it'll, it'll tell you exactly what you need to know. Okay, the next page is fun craft-grade products. They are water-based, blendable, and they play well, well with others. Okay, these are fine. I understand that real, real art supplies are super expensive. So I want you to go into Michael's with complete confidence and know how your craft grade products are going to behave the same exact way that you know that your art grade products are going to behave, okay? The same principles apply. Just understand that craft, craft grade products are not light fast, okay? And most of them are dye based. They are so fun. They come in amazing colors. Your Tombos, your Jane Davenport's products, your Eco Lines, Delusions, Tim Holtz, Brushos. I know you guys know all of these brands. I buy them and I own them all as well. But just again, be forewarned that there are consequences when using these products that you are not producing archival works, okay? So again, I just put some reminders in here, looking for things if they say dye-based or they say fade resistant, it's basically a really nice way of saying it's not light fast, but we tried everything in our power to make it so that this product isn't gonna fade. Um, fugitive means basically like colors are running away and basically fading. So just educate yourself because it, it, if you don't care, it doesn't matter. If you do care, again, it's really nice just to be educated so you understand exactly what you're using, how it behaves, and what's the long-term ramifications of these products. I get a lot of questions about why don't you use Copics? Because I know you, I teach all of my drawing things in Copics. <clears throat> why not oil-based products? And also, if you notice, I'm not referencing watercolors in the hamburger. Did you guys notice that? This whole sheet answers why not. Okay, I'm not gonna go into that because it's just, it. Uh, well, because I spell it all out on the PDF is why. And we have to move on to our the actual project or this, this, this lesson is gonna be nine hours long and no one is gonna watch it. Okay, we are now finally, oh my talking, it's like the worst. All right, I'm getting out my gelatos and my art crayons that are in my skin tone. So that's, I, mean, I have links to all the supplies that I'm using in the description box also of all my videos, okay? So you can go there and get clickable links. So I do, so yay, for layer three. All right, let's finally get this party started. Here's another thing about supplies. I like to take the easiest route. Blending skin tones with paint is wicked hard. Can I do it? Absolutely. Have I done it a million times successfully? Absolutely. It's hard though. Okay, and teaching it is also really difficult. You know what's easy though and really fun? Making skin tones with gelatos and art crayons. And I wanna show you why, how. All right, I'm using this reference photo from Pinterest. So what I'm doing, if you notice, this paint layer is like even see-through. Like I could even do a whole nother coat of skin if I want to, but I'm lazy and I wanna show you guys how this works and how easy this is. So I'm just scribble scrabbling some gelato down. Okay, and I understand it's in my, it's in that blendable category. It's on my list, okay? It's in the, it's in the lovely blend category. Okay, if you can see, I'm putting this down and with light pressure, I can, Blend it around. <laughs> it's like super straightforward, okay? It's very soft and it's just like using the moisture from my fingers to like blend it in. This made me laugh. Somebody left a comment when I was doing the, um, 
picking up the substrates and I, her exact words were, I cringed when you put your oily fingers all over that beautiful like watercolor paper. <laughs> And I'm laughing because I was like, I don't, I, there's so many layers go into my pieces. I'm thinking like, there's 18 layers by the time I'm done with it. I don't think my greasy finger layer is even going to make a dent. <laughs> of course, I didn't say that. All right, so here, that was, what color is this? I don't know, flesh, peach. This is the, um, this is rose beige, which is just a different shade, which is great. So I'm just looking at the shading that my sheet gives me. I'm not like coming up with anything here. That's another thing. I have a lot about how to read references in my brand new book. This book that came out a month ago, actually almost two months ago. All right, this How to Draw and Find Your Style has all about how to read references, especially for highlights and shading. But right now I'm literally gonna take this information and copy it. All right, so these to me are a little bit more silky and smooth than the gelatos. It's also because I already have a layer of gelato down. <clears throat> it's just a little bit more blend here. Super similar products. Again, just like the stress stains, but I do sleep better at night knowing that there, this isn't gonna fade. Okay. Boop, boop, doop. Mashing this in with my finger. So now some of the like, the paper color that was coming through before, shining through, be showing through, sorry I can't talk, is starting to kind of get knocked back a little bit. So we're just laying down this color. I also, let's talk about the ugly face because we're like launching right into it right now. Okay, I think you, there's a big thing in art, which is that you need to remember to step back and take a look at your work uh, often so that you get your perspective right and your proportions right and you understand that everything you're doing is kind of going in the right place. You kind of get really close to your work and you don't step back. Sometimes it's you know not accurate. So when you are approaching the ugly phase or you are there and you're like, oh my God, and you take your step back to look at proportions and all these things, and all you can see is this butt ugly drawing in front of your face, I want you to not look at your drawing. I want you to not step back and look at your drawing. Okay? <laughs> I want you to look away. <laughs> because once you see that, you have a reaction to it. You're gonna think, oh, that's like gross. Oh, she's ugly. Then all of a sudden you're not even paying attention to what you're doing anymore. All you're doing is getting obsessed with the fact that you don't like it anymore, okay? And it's not productive to your art piece. It's getting now, it's getting in the way of your, of your progress. So I want you to go back to, into your work closely and I want you to stop looking at her or it or whatever it is. I want you to get back to work. <laughs> I want you to look back at your reference and I want you to it, tell yourself to shut up that you love yourself very much but you are not listening to anything right now and you're just getting to work. I want you to head down and put your shadings in, okay? That's what we're gonna do. We're not giving her any credence and by her I mean that awful voice in your head, all right? We're like, yeah, that's nice, peace out, sucker. I'm gonna be shading my piece. All right, and as you notice, I'm going around and around and I'm just Simply, where I see it super dark, I'm adding, I'm like, oh, this shade's a similar color to that shade. I'm gonna use it. It's very straightforward. It's as straightforward as that. This is color blah, 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 terracotta. Okay, under her eye is shaded. And look how easy this is, you guys. It's just my freaking finger. And I have like big chub chub fingers. It's also one of the reasons I work big, I think. <laughs> I need like fat finger room, but you can use a Q-tip as well. You can probably use a blending stump too. I just use my fingers because they have like natural, whatever that lady said, <laughs> my disgusting oily fingers. They work great for blending turns out. See, it's all good. Do do, do do. Okay. And what's cool about this too is if you have a baby wipe or you put too much sawn, you can just wipe it off because they're water soluble and because they move when you add water. So it's like kind of like a double bonus. 
okay. There's like a weird, um, under her lip from the, there's like a blob of, I don't know, glue or something there. <laughs> so I'm putting it down where I want things to be the darkest and then you blend it out with your finger to be the lightest. Boop, boop, boop. She's got a lot of face shading actually. All right, so I'll give you a little foreshadowing as to what's coming next after the Mod Podge layer, which will, again, we're doing next week, is you can do a lot more shading. So you don't have to finish your shading at this stage even, which is like another kind of cool miracle. You can resume to using more different products. And again, I'll talk more about that next week, but this will be, I want you to do like 80% of your shading here. Well, we're saving that next layer for the fine tuning stuff. And then really we're done after that. So it's kind of crazy how much you can get done and how quickly are right, your neck, which doesn't even show up on this reference. Oops, sorry. We'll totally be in shadow. Whatever, whatever. All right, see how I, that's all in real time. See how much we got done with that? That is a lot. All right, I'm just doing some finishing touches of the eyes and the eyebrows and the hair and the lips, just using matching colors with those different products that I was just showing you, just keeping the different shades and accenting what was already there. My camera cut out for the Mod Podge layer, so I super apologize, but I take matte Mod Podge and I just use a foam brush and I just sweep the entire project with the Mod Podge. Some of the darker colors get a little overactivated. I'm just careful to keep them away from the face, but it's very straightforward. If you need to use multiple brushes to keep it clean, then do that, but that's all you have to do. And then just let it dry. All right, so I told you we weren't even done with the ugly face. She's even uglier <laughs> now than she was before. But my Mod Podge layer is dried. And next week, I'm gonna show you exactly how we are gonna take her from the ugliest of grossest yucky sage to finished amazing piece of art with just a bunch of pens. I'll see you next week. I hope you found this video helpful. I have to say that the number one reason that people don't make successful mixed media projects and paintings is that they quit too early. They quit. They take a look at their piece and they're not happy with what they see so they either crumple up and put it in the trash or they turn the page of their art journal or they rip up their canvas. And I'm here to tell you that if you understand what your materials are doing and what they will do based on how you're using them, you can, it will give you all the tools you need to do to power through the ugly phase and keep working so you can get over the ugly phase, work through it and come out and have success and beauty on the other side, okay? I think 99% of the time that people don't like their projects is because they're not done yet. You have to keep going. Mixed media is a lot of it is just about problem solving. You have something, you put something down and it's uh, uh, it doesn't work right. You have to fix it. So a lot of discovery and understanding and how I was able to compile the list of resources and reasons and why I have so many paintings that are successful because I've simply learned through practice and a ton of trial and error about what works and what doesn't. So the more you educate yourself on your materials and you try things and you play, and I don't even wanna say you test things out. I wanna say you play with things just to learn what is gonna happen. Between learning and your play and my videos, we will get you amazing pieces, I promise. If you need to go back and rewatch this series or you miss some episodes, again, you can click the playlist right here. If you are all caught up and you want to find some inspirational more videos, um, click the playlist right here. I'll see you next week in video number six.